Hey, how's it going, do you so first? Today we're gonna go over your short-term and long-term fuel trims, how they're calculated, and how you can use them to diagnose issues with your car. And this is gonna be especially useful when you get no codes and no check engine lights on your car. So for this video, we'll be diagnosing an issue with this 2003 Ford F-150 with a 4.2 liter V6 engine. But of course, anything you learn in this video about your fuel trims, you can apply it to any car make and model. Now the performance issue we have with this car is that when it's trying to get going from a dead stop, it's experiencing a bit of a hesitation or lack of power. And again, since we don't have a code on our scanner that would point us in the right direction, the next best thing to check is our fuel trims. Now before I show you the fuel trim numbers on this car though, let's take a couple of minutes and go over to the whiteboard and let me explain to you how they're calculated and what they exactly mean. All right, so in order for your catalytic converters to work properly and your car to pass emissions, your air fuel mixture ratio needs to average exactly this, 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. And this is to be kept at this ratio under all engine loads or RPMs. And the way that this exact ratio is achieved under all conditions is through your car's computer. Your car's computer basically controls the amount of time your fuel injectors stay open, therefore controlling the amount of fuel going through your engine. Now your car's computer doesn't control the amount of air exactly entering your engine, but it has some sensors that precisely measure the amount of air entering the engine. Usually through a MAF sensor, which is this guy right in here. Now your MAF sensor and the fuel injector pulse width is what your car's computer has in order to uh, mix the correct air fuel mixture. But there are a lot of things outside your car's computer's control that could affect the air fuel mixture and cause you to have either a lean or a rich condition. Now in order for your car's computer to be able to fine tune the air fuel mixture and also take into account any issues that may arise from out of its control that may affect the air fuel mixture, what it uses is your oxygen sensors. Now when you have a correct air fuel mixture, the signal from your oxygen sensor will look like this. It will oscillate between about 0.1 volts to about 0.9 volts and it will look like this and it would average at about 0.450 volts. And this is for your pre-cat or upstream oxygen sensor. Now let's say something happens that causes your oxygen sensor to start putting out very little voltage, or in other words, saying to your car's computer that you have a lean condition and too much air to too little fuel in your exhaust gases. So in order for your car's computer to compensate for the extra amount of air that, it, that the oxygen sensor is sensing coming out of your engine, it will increase the amount of time your fuel injectors stay open, or in other words, your fuel injector pulse width. And this will show as a positive percentage in your short-term fuel trim. So it will look like something like this. And this will increase until your oxygen sensors start oscillating again between 0.1 to 0.9 volts. And that's given if your oxygen sensors are working properly. If you have an oxygen sensor that's bad and it's uh, maybe shorted to ground, let's say, and it's only putting out 0.0 volts to your car's computer, this is gonna increase, but not because you have a problem with a MAF sensor or your uh, fuel injectors or something, but rather, your, simply your oxygen sensors are bad. Now on the other hand, if you have an oxygen sensor that's uh, showing high voltage, it's basically saying to your car's computer that you have a rich fuel mixture, air fuel mixture going to your engine, and your car's computer will respond by shortening the time your fuel injectors are opened, and this will show as a negative percentage in your short-term fuel trim. So basically, let's say it would be negative 20% here. So in so many words, if you have a positive number here, your car is running lean. If you have a negative number here, your car is running rich. And the job of your short-term fuel trim is to make sure that your oxygen sensor is oscillating between lean and rich and averaging at 0.45 volts. Now, if the problem that's causing your rich or lean condition is continuous and it's affecting your engine's air fuel mixture for a long time, if that's the case, the information from your short-term fuel trim will transfer over to your long-term fuel trim. So let's say we're running lean and we're 20% positive. What will happen is that you'll get 20% positive on the long-term fuel trim. And this is gonna happen slowly though. It's not gonna happen as soon as this goes 20%. Your car's computer will have to run lean for a while uh, in order for this to start increasing slowly. But as this increases, this will decrease until this goes all the way back down to about zero. And I think I forgot to mention what are some good numbers for your short and long-term fuel trims. For the short-term fuel trim, anything uh, from negative to positive 3% is considered okay. If, uh, in other words, the percentage is going up and down between negative three and positive three, 
that's good enough. Now your long-term fuel trim, you want to see it uh, staying steady at, at or near 0%. You know, if it's up or down a few percentage points, it's not a big deal. As a basic rule of thumb, if you add uh, these two percentages together, you don't want to have more than negative or positive 10%. Now as far as what are some things that could cause a lean condition? Well, on the air side, a bad or dirty MAF sensor would do it, and a bad oxygen sensor that's reporting lean when it's not supposed to. Vacuum leaks are a very common cause for lean conditions, and also an exhaust leak above or upstream of your pre-cat O2 sensor, like at where your uh, uh, exhaust manifold meets your cylinder head. That gasket, if that exhaust gasket is leaking, it's gonna allow air to enter your exhaust system, throwing off your O2 sensor, uh, making it report lean when it's not supposed to. And on the fuel side, dirty fuel injectors would keep enough air from entering your combustion chambers, cause a lean condition a weak fuel pump, and also restricted fuel lines, like if you have a dirty fuel filter, would do the same thing. And as far as what are some things that could cause a rich condition, on the air side, again, a MAF sensor. Generally speaking, MAF sensors, when they go bad or get dirty, they are responsible for a lean condition. But on occasion, I believe they could be responsible for a rich condition. Same thing again, an O2 sensor that's reporting rich when it's not supposed to. Uh, worn engine, if you have worn piston rings, your engine is not gonna be able to suck in enough air to mixed with the fuel mixture, therefore causing a rich condition. Also exhaust restrictions. Now on this, on this one, I don't have personal experience with this one exactly. Some say this could also be responsible for a lean condition, like a, also an exhaust restriction. The most common cause, most common example I should say would be a clogged catalytic converter. And on the fuel side, a leaking fuel injectors, uh, bad fuel pressure regulators, EVAP system, like if the purge soil is stuck open, you know, you're just gonna be sucking in uh, fuel vapors uh, when you're not supposed to, causing a rich condition, also high fuel pressure. He said your pressure lines would do the same. All right, enough whiteboard action for now. Let's get to diagnosing our issue on this car. All right, so what we're gonna do is to first start our engine. And you wanna run the engine until it's properly warmed up and it's in closed loop. And that's a fact. All right, it's 10 minutes later. The car is properly warmed up. Now it's time to take a look at our data. So we'll just scroll down to our live data option, enter. And the first thing we're gonna check is gonna be our pre-cat O2 sensors. Cause if they're not working properly, all our fuel trims are gonna be off. So here's a shot of our pre-cat O2 sensor on bank one. This is basically saying oxygen sensor one one, which is oxygen sensor bank one sensor one. And as you can see, this is oscillating between 0.08 to 0.7, which is what we wanna see. So this is working properly. So next we'll go over to our sensor for bank two, and here it is, O2 sensor two one, which is bank two sensor one. And this one also is oscillating between 0 0.07, 0 0.08 to about 0.7. So that's a good sign as well. All right, now that we've confirmed our O2 sensors are working properly and they're oscillating, basically means that our short-term fuel trim should be at or near zero, unless things are really bad which I don't think is the case with this car because this car otherwise drives, you know, okay. But if there is a problem with our fuel trims, it will show in the long-term fuel trim. So here's a look at our short-term fuel trim for bank one. And as you can see, it's between negative three to about positive three, which is about normal. And here's a short-term fuel trim for bank two. And this one as well is about negative three to positive three, which again is a good sign. And here's a look at our long-term fuel trim for bank one. And this one is at about 15%, which is too high and it shows a lean condition. This basically means that the computer has to increase the injector on time by about 15% in order to get the air fuel mixture to the correct ratio. And here's a long-term fuel trim for bank two. And this one is even higher at about 17%, which again means that we're running lean on this bank as well. All right, so those are our numbers uh, for our fuel trims at idle, but let's uh, raise the RPM to about 2,500 to 3,000 and hold it there and see whether it makes a difference in our fuel trim numbers. All right, that's interesting. As you can see, it's gone down to about 9.4%, which is a bit of an improvement. All right, let's do the same thing for our bank too. All right, also the numbers on this bank got 
better as well. All right, so let's go over the number we just collected and see whether we can solve this puzzle. So on this card, on one bank, we had about 19%. On the, second, on the other bank, we had about 14.8%. And those numbers were positive, therefore, meaning we have, we're having a lean condition and our computer has to increase the injector pulse width to allow more fuel to mix with the extra air that's in there. But these numbers were at idle. But what happened was that when we opened the throttle and increased our RPM, these numbers decreased, which is going to generally indicate a vacuum leak. When the throttle plate is closed, your engine, the pistons going up and down, they're sucking a lot of, uh, a lot of air and they're putting a lot of vacuum uh, inside your intake manifold. So if you have a vacuum leak, your uh, engine is gonna be sucking in a lot of air through that vacuum leak, but when the throttle plate is open, you know, there's an easier access for getting air inside the engine than the vacuum leak you have after the throttle plate. So the effect of the whatever vacuum leak you have decreases as you open the throttle plate, and therefore what, uh, and that's the reason why we saw the improvement in our long-term fuel trims. All right, so the next step would be to go and find our vacuum leak and confirm our diagnosis. But the only problem is I've been all over this engine with some starting fluid, brake clean, and even uh, got my propane out, and I just can't find the vacuum leak. What I think is happening is, uh, as it's very common on these fours, is the upper intake manifold gaskets and O-rings are leaking, and you can't really spray anything in there because they're leaking on the inside of the uh, in intake manifold. But if I had a smoke machine, we would be able to confirm it, but unfortunately I don't. But I might make a separate video showing you how you can make a duty sulfur smoke machine and find vacuum and evap leaks. You might want to make sure you stay tuned for that, but you may also want to consider checking out these other related videos of which I put links to on the screen that you can click on. There will also be links in the description box down below. Alright, hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you guys next time.